Welcome to Bridging Borders, the podcast where we try to bridge the gap between cultures through insightful conversations. Together, we explore diverse topics from productivity to language learning, all the while helping you improve your English skills. Hey, Sam, how are you doing today? Hey, Veronica, I'm really well, thank you. I'm having a good day so far. And I went out for some food with my friends last night and we ate tacos and I was thinking how good they would be compared to the tacos that you normally eat. And I'm a little bit scared to actually find out the answer because, it, well, I'm not, you won't, I won't find out the answer, but I had a student once who was Japanese and she lived in London and she'd been living in London for a few years. And I asked her, had she found many good places to eat sushi in London? And she said that she'd been there for a few years and she was yet to find good sushi in London. So that scared oh, no. me a little bit. And I'm thinking all international food in the UK is bad. Oh my God, this is crazy. Well, I don't think that like all international food in England is bad, but I think, yeah, I think it takes a little bit of time to find a good spot. But I think it also depends on like our preferences. Like, what are you looking for? Because some people, they have like very high expectations in terms of food. For other people, it's like, oh, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, one of my students, an Italian guy, he'd been in the UK last week. And he said to me, good beers in the UK, bad food. Wow. This is interesting. But also like something that I obviously that a lot of people say about Mexico, especially Mexico City, is that the food here is really good. And in Mexico City, you just you can find a lot of different restaurants and a lot of different places to eat, different cuisines, a lot of famous restaurants. I don't know if you or you guys listening to this episode have watched this Netflix documentary or like a movie about the restaurant Contramar. Contramar is basically like a very famous place here in Mexico City, and they're famous for their seafood. They make a lot of dishes with seafood. That's like their main thing. And even like Netflix made a movie about their restaurant. It's like extremely famous, and people say it's very good. Obviously, I haven't gone there because I'm vegan, but very, very famous. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Maybe I'll check it out. But yeah, I don't know, I don't know if, if you go to a restaurant and it's... Like if it's in, like if you go to a restaurant in the UK and it's owned by Italian people, it's probably better, more likely going to be better than if it's English people trying to recreate some Italian style food because they went to uh, Milan on holiday for two weeks or something. Yes, most likely. Yeah. Yeah, I worked in a restaurant once where it was Indian street food, and one of the reviews was. Uh, born in Mumbai, died in Leeds, and Leeds is a city that it was in. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was oh, a very good review. <laughs> no, but we're not talking we about food this episode, are we, Veronica? Yeah, we're not. We're actually going to talk about music festivals and music in general. Can you learn languages with music? Um, yeah, have our music taste changed over the years? Uh, so, Sam, let's begin with you. What is your taste in music? Do you think it has changed over the years of you growing up? I think so, yeah. I think I've definitely niched down into a sp specific type of hip-hop that I like. And when I was a lot younger, I liked a lot of just mainstream music. And I found a, a really old social media page of mine. I think it was called B Bebo. It's like, this is pre-Facebook. I've and, never heard of it before. Bebo. Yeah, it's really, really old. I think only people in the UK used it, maybe. Okay. But it's pretty similar. You set up like a page and you have like, you have like a friend list or whatever, and you can choose, the, you, you actually choose the order of your friends depending on how friendly you are with them. And you can have top, it was, it was oh similar. Oh my God. Um, yeah, but I had that when I was really young and I don't think, I don't think it is, it, it, it's around anymore, but I found my old, pay, like a screenshot of my old page and it had all the music that I liked. And I was looking at it, I was like, I can't believe I used to listen to that music. And I actually thinking I didn't like that music, but I just thought other people like that music. So I said I like that music. But I think I like hip hop music mostly. And I guess hip hop or rap music, which I think is a good genre in my opinion, because it has a good mi mixture of actual musical elements with the instrumentals or beats and also the lyrical aspect. I was in the car the other day with my girlfriend and her sister, and I asked them, do you know what this song is about? 
And they said, no, I don't really listen to the lyrics. And I was like, what? You don't listen to the lyrics? That's like one of the main kind of points of a song for me. I know some people are more interested in the feelings that music gives them. And they might be more interested in uh, electronic music or uh, music genres like house or techno or drum and bass, for example, because Mm -hmm. of like the the feelings it gives them. But Mm -hmm. I like hip hop because I like the kind of uh, language aspect to it in the sense that it's basically poetry, but yeah. for for people that aren't poets. And uh-huh. I that's what I really like about hip hop and rap music is that I know some people are gonna be thinking, you know, rap music isn't that deep in terms of the lyrics. Well, it depends on who you're listening to. Some of them just rap about money and women and cars, and there are definitely <laughs> some artists and rappers that do that, but a lot of them don't. So yeah, I think hip hop is definitely my favorite genre and has been for a long time it has changed recently um the the groups i used to listen to when i was at university a little bit different than what i maybe listen to now but i still like hip-hop because i really like the lyrical aspect and the wordplay and i like it when an artist is really clever with their words and i think that's why i like stand-up comedy as well because it's basically invoking emotions or feelings or kind of being intelligent through the use of language and words. So that's why I like hip hop, I think. But I also like other genres. I like, I've started to like house and techno music a little bit mm-hmm. more since uh, maybe like four years ago, because some of my friends listen to it a lot more than I used to. And they used to DJ a little bit and I'd have to listen to them. And then also we'd when we'd go out, we had mostly listened to that. So I think they introduced me to some that type of genre, but still hip hop number one. And then electronic music. I used to listen to loads of drum and bass when I was younger, when I was like 18 and me and my friends would go out and listen to drum and bass. I know that's some people's nightmare um, and some drum and bass, especially the genre jump up drum and bass is quite specific and aggressive, which a lot of people wouldn't like. But yeah, I think they're my three I wouldn't say drum and bass is at the top three, but I suppose hip hop, um, house and techno, I'm going to put them together. Then mm-hmm. I, I just like, I've been listening to a bit of country music actually recently, which is a bit wow. strange for someone from the UK. But yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I like all, all sorts of music as long as it's good, I guess. But I try to stay away from, I don't purposely do this, but I'm not too interested in kind of the, the most mainstream or number one songs. I don't listen to Taylor Swift or Ed Sheeran or anyone oh, like no. that. But not, not saying there's a problem with that. We have nothing that. to talk about now. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> what about you, No, Monica? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting that you mentioned how your tastes have kind of changed, but at the same time, maybe you have found like new artists to listen to and uh, some of the music just means a different thing to you than it does to other people as you said like for some people it's more about the the melody like like the um, yeah the sounds and stuff like that the instruments that the <clears throat> the artists are using for other people it's more the lyrics aspect of it i think for me um, a few years ago i became very interested in electronic music house techno not drum and bass i don't really like drum and bass just because it is it is tough sometimes i don't know especially when you go to festivals and like all you do is listen to drum and bass like you stay close to that stage sometimes i just want to take a break and listen to something with lyrics and for example maybe for you sam i can and for everyone listening i can recommend a few artists in like this techno electronic music area where they use a lot of lyrics because people think that like oh techno and house music it's all like dunce, 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 and that's it yeah it, i mean it, it is kind of true it can be like that but it can also be different like one artist that i recently well a few years ago fell in love with is fred again so it's very easy i think he's from the uk actually i'm yes, not yeah. sure he's very popular here okay. now Okay, got it. Yeah, he, he his music is so good, especially for like a person who is not sure if you're interested in electronic music and you just want to kind of tip your toes and try something new. Yeah, Fred again is definitely a great a great place to start. I would say, 
Um, so house music, I think right now I'm getting more and more interested in stutter house. It's like a specific kind of house music and it is so much fun. So like one of the most famous artists in this area is called Bunt, B-U-N-T, Bunt. His music is really fun. Basically, Stutter House is, for me, when I listen to it, I don't know why, like, I imagine something super light and, like, like butterflies flying. It's a very unique sound, and you should definitely check it out. I really, really like this sound. Like, on Spotify, there are a lot of different playlists. If you tap in Stutter House, yeah, you will, I think you will definitely, like, you, Sam, and everyone listening to us right now, you will definitely find something about Stutter House that you like. Um, I do like pop music. I do like Taylor Swift and all of those other people. I do like their music because of the lyrics, because it's so popular and kind of like it unites so many people because so many people know about these artists. I remember um, two years ago, I went to Cold Place concert here in Mexico City and people went crazy. Like the energy, everything. I love this concert. Like it was so, so much fun. I think Coldplay, I, I love their music too. I would say it's definitely more like mainstream. Um, but yeah, anyway, I still really, really like this kind of music too. So I would say for me, the top three. Right now, it's definitely stutter music is like the top one. I absolutely love this subgenre, if I can call it that. Then just house music in general, and then number three is probably pop music. Yeah, I like I like some pop music. I like I don't think I I think I just like specific songs of lots of different genres. Mm. So if mm -hmm. like I think last year Kylie Minogue released a new song called Padam, and it was so good, <laughs> and I listened to that a lot. Uh, I like Dua Lipa's music. I also I think that's just because I fancy her a bit or a lot. Uh, but yeah, there's lots there's lots of pop music uh, artists that I like. Maybe not male ones really i'm trying to think of who are some big male pop artists the um, weekend yeah true yeah i don't justin yeah bieber. i think it's just more yeah oh yeah justin bieber of course <laughs> harry styles is he pop harry styles for sure mm -hmm. he's huge yeah yeah i think it's mostly yeah female pop artists that i mm -hmm. i like but i think when i go down my spotify likes i'll find a wide range of songs most of them will be Hip hop music or house or techno, mostly hip hop, to be honest. But then there will be occasionally be like a specific song, maybe from an artist, which is a completely different genre that I usually like, but I just really like that song. So, for example, I might have a, a few Nirvana songs on there or a, like songs that I hear in movies. That's like a like a really good one. Like I watched. Have you seen the new Batman film? I think it came out like two mm. or three years ago. No. But with Robert Patterson. It's 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 a really good film actually, but there's a okay, Nirvana song in in that, and I don't usually listen to rock music or songs from the Nirvana, but because it had such an emotional response to me in the cinema, I you know found that song on Spotify right away, and I listened to it probably two or three times a day for like two weeks, and I was listening to it in the gym as if I was training to fight crime in Manchester like Batman would be, but yeah, I think I think I've got loads of different genres on my spotify and i try to use the discover weekly uh thing playlist that they have where they kind of give you new music which i think i don't do enough a lot of the times i just kind of recycle through the songs that i've already listened to rather than listening to uh or trying to find new songs but i've actually downloaded an app which is a radio station called nts on my phone and it's based in the uk it's been going for quite a few uh few years now and there's it's 24 seven radio station. You can listen on your phone. There are two channels. And so you can choose which one you listen to. And they're all English speakers. I think actually they're definitely not, but I'd say 90% of it, it's English speakers. And if they're not English, maybe they don't actually talk. They just play music, which is a shame, but most people wouldn't understand them because it's English based, like I said, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good way to listen to new music because they have DJs on there constantly and DJs are going to be any, like the, the best people for being in tune with uh, kind of cool music especially music that people don't really listen to that much and that's a really good way to i found to find new music wow this is pretty interesting yeah that's pretty cool 
I I also wanted to say that um, a month ago I went to a music festival here in Mexico City and there I experienced something super interesting and I actually I kind of liked it but basically one of the one of the artists there what she was doing was she was mixing pop music with hard style techno and it was <laughs> very unusual kind of like um, imagining like a Taylor Swift song like it's me I, and then something like do, 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 yeah, do. it was very interesting and it's i feel like she was doing it to attract more attention because like when people hear something like taylor swift or justin bieber she was actually mixing, mixing justin bieber she used his song baby and i was like this is so interesting and uh it's something unique i think for a lot of people music is like the way to express themselves to share something with the world and when i hear something like that it, my first reaction is interesting like why did they decide to do it and now i don't know why like every single time i listen to a pop song right now i'm just like i wonder how it will sound like if we mix it with think? like a very hard style techno song so yeah it's very interesting um, I wanted to ask you, Sam, how do you prefer to listen to music right now? How often do you listen to music? Is it every day? Uh, yeah. What's your experience like? Hmm. I think I listen to music every day. I'd say most of the time it's, I listen to music in the gym. I think I sometimes listen to it. I definitely like doing it when I'm cooking. Sometimes like if I'm cooking something Italian, I'll just ask my um, <laughs> voice assistant to play some italian cooking music or whatever and oh, usually it. they find a, a a playlist to kind of go with the the, the the ambiance of my cooking style so i like to do that when i'm walking like if i w walk to my office i prefer listening to a podcast i think but that's about it i think it's usually out of the house i'm never really or if i'm in the shower or if i'm getting ready to go on a night out i'll definitely be listening to some music just to kind of up the tempo and get me in the mood a little bit but that's about it. Or when I'm out with my friends, uh, going to listen to some music, but I definitely don't listen to as much music as I used to, where it was kind of just like blocking thoughts in a way, like some people mm -hmm. just don't want to be alone with their thoughts. And one way to do that is just to constantly have some music on. So I think I, a lot of people do that. And I used to do that a lot more than I do, but I try to value kind of being present sometimes. So like when I go, uh, go on a walk or like a walk to and from work, I try to do it with no headphones rather than listening to a podcast or a YouTube video or listening to music. I kind of try to give you my brain a little bit of a rest rather than constantly having some input. But I think that's when I listen to music, mostly probably in the gym. What about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how you said that, like you're trying to basically be more present. Because um, a few days ago, I read an article on Medium about how a lot of people are afraid of silence they as you just said like they try to listen to music podcasts like anything because they think silence, silence is, is bad. bad doing nothing absolutely nothing sitting in silence is horrible you're not staying productive i think there are like two groups of people probably the first one is more like i need to be constantly listening to something reading something doing something because i want to make the most out of my day right because i want to be like constantly productive this constant productivity um, mindset and the second type of people is probably they're like experiencing extra internal anxiety and that's why they're constantly like trying to block their thoughts and that's why they're listening to something but in a way it's only masking the problem like putting a band-aid on it instead of dealing with it um, but I think for me personally I don't listen to music much, to be honest. Um, if I want to go to a music festival, a show, to a club, then I'm going to research the artist. I'm going to like do a deep dive, listen to as many of their songs as possible. When I went to the music festival in Mexico City, it's called EDC. I created a whole playlist on Spotify, like all the artists I personally wanted to see, their songs I liked. So I feel like I really like like researching a lot of things when it comes to music. Um, sometimes, though, I would listen to music when I am studying or learning something or kind of working. I would just turn on this like, uh, what are they called? Sofi, Sofi beats. Lo-fi. Lo-fi. Yeah, lo-fi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, lo-fi beats. 
um yeah i, I like that a lot because it's kind of like relaxes me and i feel like yeah, you know, I'm, yeah exactly and i'm <laughs> like oh i'm learning you know i'm studying something a lot of people are listening to this playlist right now probably too and like we're all learning but I really like what you just shared with us. You said how you listen to music to set the mood, right? Like mm. if you're cooking something, I have, per like, honestly, I have never tried doing it before, but it sounds so much fun. Like I should do it too. Like if I'm making a Korean recipe, because recently I've been obsessed with like cooking something Korean, I should definitely listen to some like Korean music and like really get into the mood. <laughs> yeah, I guess some K-pop on yeah okay <laughs> yeah maybe maybe that too yeah <laughs> yeah I, li I like listening to lo-fi music or maybe even classical music when i'm going to when i need to concentrate on something if i feel like oh this is gonna be a horrible task and it's gonna be really boring so one way to just overcome that is by listening to some music mm -hmm. so some people would say you, that you shouldn't rely on music and you should just be able to you know will yourself or discipline yourself through it but a little music doesn't help. My my girlfriend loves classical music, actually. And every time that wow. we're in the car, she always turns on the radio station Classic FM in <laughs> in the UK. And yeah, they have really nice sounding presenters. They always sound like pretty posh, uh, okay. like a, a, an RP, a British English accent. So if you're mm. interested in sounding like that um, and you like classical music, then try and check out Classic FM. They've got some good classical bangers on there. <laughs> but she always listens to it in the car. We're actually going to see Hans Zimmer uh, next month, who is a huge producer, actually, and does a lot of the music for Christian Christopher Nolan films like uh, Inception wow. and stuff like that. So that should be really fun. Wow, this is super interesting. Yeah, I recently also became very interested in uh, the music that the musical instrument called Handpan produces. Yeah, Handpan or a hand drum. Uh, but usually people call it a hand pan. It is such a beautiful sound. It relaxes me so much. Like when I want to relax, do yoga, meditate. Wow, this sound, I like I'm just in love with it. I also Google how much it would cost to like buy an actual hand pan. And surprisingly, <laughs> they're very expensive. Like, obviously, I'm a complete beginner. I don't know anything about it. And so I would probably have to spend like closer to $300 on like my entry level hand pan and i'm like i don't <laughs> know maybe i don't want to learn <laughs> how to do it because when i when i got very interested in learning how to play ukulele i could buy one obviously very cheaply especially like second hand and stuff like that but this musical instrument is something so special it just feels like someone is like stroking your brain <laughs> i don't know when i listen to it it's just so relaxing for me yeah, I'm gonna have a YouTube of uh, what a handpan sounds like after this. You should, you should, yeah. And everyone listening to guys, you should yep. check it out too. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> bought a ukulele once as well, actually. When I was in school, there was a little fad or phase at school where one of the teachers bought a ukulele and started a ukulele club, and then everyone went to the local music shop and spent like fifteen pounds on a colorful ukulele, and they came in all different colors. And Aww. I never learned it, and I sold it to a friend for probably the same price that I bought it. So, no loss. But I've never learned any musical instruments, and I actually tell my parents that I wish they pushed that on me as a kid to learn a musical instrument, but they never did. So, can't go back in time, <laughs> and I haven't learned since. So, yeah, I um, I actually also didn't learn any musical instrument when I was a kid, but then growing up. I was like, oh, I really like how, you know, the piano sounds. So let me try to learn how to play the piano. And I actually uh, self-taught myself to a good level. I could play a few songs. Like, I knew everything. It was pretty, pretty cool, you know, like, especially because I completely self-taught myself. Self some textbooks, YouTube videos, and that's it. But, yeah, it was like, I don't know, three years ago. So I probably completely forgot everything. I haven't practiced in three years um yeah and recently i started learning how to play ukulele i have not been very consistent but right now i got inspired again because a friend of mine came to mexico city and he knows how to play ukulele and he was like yeah veronica it's like so easy like only a few chords you need to get this strumming right and i already know a lot of like the major chords to play ukulele i know all of them for me it's just i need to practice strumming different strumming patterns 
that's it. Like it's it's not that hard. Um, if you're consistent, like you want to do it, you can do it. You can definitely self teach yourself how to play ukulele and a lot of musical instruments. I feel like. Mm, yeah. Do you find it? Do you think there's like a parallel between learning a language and learning an instrument? Um, I think in a way, yes, because you're just learning something new, like a new skill, right? If you think of a language as a skill, for example, speaking Spanish or speaking English is a skill. Yes, absolutely. A lot of similarities because you have to find the time, you have to be consistent, you have to practice, you have to have fun while doing that. And that's the key. If you're enjoying it, you're having fun, doing something interesting, you're going to learn a lot faster. You're going to improve faster. You're going to be able to uh, get to a good level much faster this way. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Have you been to many festivals then? Um, I have visited a few festivals here in Mexico, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, so two, one, I think a year ago, I went to EDC in Mexico City. EDC stands for Electric uh, Daisy Carnival, and it's basically a festival of electronic music. There are a lot of different stages, a lot of different artists, artists that play, you know, more hard style or drum and bass, something more pop. So it was a lot of fun for sure. And this year I went to EDC again. Um, I think EDC is especially famous in Las Vegas, like a very, very, very famous festival, but here in Mexico City as well. They do it every single year. And I also went to one festival in Monterrey, a different city here in Mexico. And there I actually saw Fred again. And that was my, you know, like my goal. I really wanted to see him perform on stage. And it was amazing. Like I loved it so much. I made sure that I was very close to the stage too. Uh, it was so fun. I absolutely love his music. Um, yeah, and I went to like a few just shows of particular like artists that I like. And I also went to Coldplay's concert. That's actually the only concert I attended. <laughs> mm. Yeah, nice. So did you camp at any of those festivals? Mm -mm. No, never. Uh, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah, because uh, I've talked to a lot of my friends and they tell me that, nah, <laughs> it's not worth it. It's It's hard because uh, some of my friends camped at EDC and they said that it was hot like sometimes the AC didn't work you're kind of living in a tent in a tent of uh, the lines to the bathroom to the shower are gigantic and I was like no I don't want to do it like I'm good just coming back home relaxing sleeping well <laughs> yeah what about you I think I've camped at four different festivals. Oh and my God. The last that's one I crazy. went to was two years ago. It is, you just have to embrace it. You have to just embrace that I'm just not going to sleep well for like three or four nights and I'm going to be disgusting. And as long as everyone else is being disgusting, then that's okay. But yeah, but people is in it the UK worth it? Do, Did you like it? Uh, 100%. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. fun. And you get like okay. a full festival experience. Like it's like you're taken out of your reality and kind of put into a different one where you're in this crazy place for like four days or whatever and mm -hmm. any signs of reality are kind of very far, very far away so yeah. it's, it's pretty fun i think i'm kind of over camping at a festival now and if i do it again i will go for the glamping option mm. which is glam camping <laughs> so yeah you can like spend a lot of money i think it's quite expensive to stay in like a teepee or some pre-made tent and you can have actual beds there and there's vip showers and vip toilets so i think i'd do that because it is quite horrible staying in a tent with uh, maybe lots of other people and there's just you know you're going to bed you might go to bed at like three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. but there's more there's just a, just a thud of music in the background yeah. and then you wake up whenever you wake up and you usually wake up to music as well or just kind of so much noise around you because there's loads of people around you so mm -hmm. you're gonna sleep i think when i came back from lost village two years ago and i think i went in 2021 actually i slept for like maybe 16 hours and i was so ill for like two weeks afterwards i had like a horrendous oh, cough no. because of the it was like it was really dusty there which you didn't realize at the time but yeah my lungs were not in good condition after that but 
it was really fun <laughs> it was still worth it <laughs> it was really fun it was so worth it <laughs> yeah yeah I, i've been to uh... so i went the first one i went to when i was 17 so i couldn't even buy alcohol uh then which is a pretty important part to go into a festival in the uk so we had to, we had to stand outside the supermarket and wait for someone that we knew who was older or kind of ask random people to buy us alcohol <laughs> and then we had to sneak it into the festival by like putting it down our, in our Dangerous. underwear and stuff <laughs> i know yeah um, and that was in wales next to a beach which is really nice because we could go to the beach in the, in the dome then i went to two smaller festivals called nolstock which is by my hometown of shrewsbury and then yeah i went to a day festival called park life which is the biggest festival in manchester and loads of acts are there like the biggest acts in the uk and usually maybe some from around the world but mostly uk mm -hmm. are there and that was horrible because it was in manchester and it rains in manchester so oh no all the time well it's where i live so it's reality but it was just so muddy and you'd just be walking and you couldn't actually choose the direction that you're walking in because you'd just be going with the, the crowd and, and the mud so that wasn't great i didn't enjoy that too much and then yeah when i went to lost village two years ago that was mostly techno and house and i really enjoyed that but you're kind of sick of it by the end you're like i don't want to listen to any more music like that again but <laughs> yeah i saw fortet there who was probably one of the best kind of um house and techno sets i've ever seen and he actually mixed some sugar babes with some kind of techno as well so maybe he yeah, maybe, maybe there is a bit of a trend of mixing popular pop music with techno or house mm -hmm. yeah but actually um what you just shared reminded me of how last year when i went to edc I just got general tickets, like a general, a regular experience uh, where you go to stages and stuff like that. But this year, I decided to get VIP tickets. And oh my God, it was so worth it. And like really? after this experience, yeah, after this experience, it was like, now I understand why, like for people who try flying business, it's so hard to go back to economy <laughs> and start flying economy because like once you experience that you're like oh it's so much more expensive but like this is the only way i want to go to festivals now because basically uh what the vip experience uh gave me is um access to better bathrooms as you said and it is so freaking important when you're at a festival at least to me i remember my first year the lines were huge and the, like those little like cubicles they were so small and dark it was like pitch dark in there so you have to use your flashlight and it's just like not the most pleasant experience obviously and with the vip tickets you get access to like real bathrooms you can stand up there you can you know move your arms and like there's a lot of space and you get access to a lot of like fun activities that are included in the price of your ticket you can get your hair done you can get your makeup done yeah it's all included it's really really nice and also you get like a closer access to the stage and it's really fun because like if there's a very famous famous artist you want to see for example for me was skrillex obviously a lot of people wanted to see skrillex and uh, for the people who got vip tickets we kind of had like a separate access to the stage where yes even like for skrillex there was a huge crowd even among the like vip folks but still it's, it's not that many people and it was nice too because you didn't have to like rush to the stage to make sure you make it on time to make sure you get a nice spot so it's a nice experience i would say like if you just want to chill more take it easy be like super slow and that's how i like to go to festivals i like everything to be like slow and easy and relaxing because my first experience it was more like running around and like making sure like ev like i'm on time everywhere and my second experience was much much better because of yeah I'm, i've booked a festival for this summer it's called forwards festival in bristol and you may have convinced me to have a look if there is a VIP option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check it out. Depending on the price, of course. Yeah, depending on the price and also depending on what it gives you, right? If it's mm. worth it for the price you're getting. But for me, it was 100% worth it. Like everything was just 10,000 times better. I enjoyed the whole experience much more. Hmm. Nice. Are there any festivals that you would like to go to that you haven't been to? 
Yes, I would say that I would like to go to Burning Man one mm, day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty intense. Yeah, it's pretty intense. I'm pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty intense and pretty crazy, but I would like to go just for the experience, you know, like to cross mm -hmm. it off my list. It's not like something that I'm planning to attend like every single year, no. But I actually have a friend who like loves Burning Man and like he goes almost every single year. So yeah, maybe like I would like to go to Burning Man and probably Coachella just because like mm. they're so famous in the States. Everyone talks about them. Again, it's an experience to cross it off my list. Um, yeah, I think that's probably pretty much it. Yeah, what about you? I don't know. I think. I think Burning Man would be pretty fun, actually. Um, yeah. There's, there was a documentary on Burning Man a few years ago that came out, which was, I can't really remember, but it was just about a time at Burning, I think it was Burning Man, where kind of just everything went crazy and all chaos just unfolded and the security basically lost control. Oh my God. It was a pretty interesting documentary, but I think, yeah, Burning Man would be fun, but the main one for me is... Glastonbury. I don't know if you've heard of this festival, but it's the biggest one in the UK. And mm -hmm. they usually yeah, have huge headline acts and it's like a whole week. And the BBC film kind of all of it. So it's pretty nice even if you're not at the festival because they film all the live performances or some like nice. kind of a loads of the artists. So if you just turn on the TV kind of like on a Saturday, then they'll be filming Glastonbury. So like everyone in the nation is somewhat involved and <laughs> that they save them on the bbc iplayer so you can catch up with them afterwards and check out their live performances so i think it's just glastonbury a few of my friends went last year and said it was great and they wouldn't want to go to another festival ever again because wow. it was so good so yeah you maybe, said it lasts for a week yeah it's a whole week oh my god that's crazy yeah and people camp i think you have to camp oh no how do you how does it oh my god a whole week of like camping and listening to music it's it's pretty exhausting yeah i think you'd be like clocking in like 30 40 thousand steps a day probably yeah, for like a whole yeah. week and you, you wouldn't be eating that much because at a festival mm -hmm. you don't you don't usually eat that much and i'm sure all of the british population is fueled by alcohol at that festival Probably a lot of them don't even shower for a whole week either. So they just kind of have baby oh, wipes no. and do it under their arms. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so there'll be some stinky people in those crowds. But again, as you said, yes, like as an experience, if you're ready for it, I think like the mental aspect of it is so freaking important because the first time I went to a music festival, I was not prepared at all. I didn't know where I was going. I was just like, I didn't even know who the headliners were, like who the artists were. I was just like, okay, guys, let's go. You know, I'm just going to go with you. And no, I did not recommend having this kind of approach to go into a music festival. I think it's very important to take control of your experience and not expect that your experience is going to be great just because it's going to be great or expect other people like your friends or your partner to make it great for you because th i think that's the the mistake that i made the, the very first time um and the next time i was like no i'm not doing it again i'm gonna prepare mentally like if i know it's gonna be physically challenging for three days straight i'm gonna make sure i do yoga or stretch or like do a meditation like something that's gonna help me recharge and get this energy back instead of like every single day walking like i'm tired this sucks and stuff like that so making sure i drink enough water making sure i eat good food all of these things are so important making sure i wear the right clothes the right shoes um because usually you know we're tempted to wear something stylish something cool and not necessarily super comfortable but comfort is extremely important if you want to have a good festival experience yeah absolutely you have to i think people do like shop beforehand for certain outfits especially mm -hmm. i think women probably go to more of an effort than men do on average but yeah usually people like to look stylish or even just like fun i guess wearing fun. colorful mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. because you're away from your your normal life you don't have to wear your work clothes there at <laughs> all so yeah but comfort is definitely key especially some good footwear mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so the last thing i wanted to ask you was do you think listening to music is a good way 
to improve the language that you're learning? I think so. Um, I think especially if you're being very mindful about it, if you're trying to figure out for example, if like there are some words that you don't know that the artist is using in the song, you look them up, you understand, okay, this is what it means and stuff like that. I think it can be very helpful, but at the same time, I think it's important to remember that a lot of songs are extremely informal. They might have some like incorrect grammar. Like, for example, a very good example is when um, uh, instead of saying like she thinks, they might say she think or he think like just admit the s it is extremely common and it doesn't mean you have to talk like this in your everyday conversations but i think music can definitely introduce this fun into your life if you feel like language learning has become mundane boring it doesn't excite you anymore it's really important to try to find this element of fun and like bring this into the whole experience because i feel like a few months ago i read uh this uh, book by ali abdal like a very famous youtuber he recently published his own book uh feel good productivity that's the title of the book and that's the main basically aspect that at least i kind of wrote down for myself from this book about making sure that everything you're doing you always ask yourself this question what would i do if it was fun like how would i approach the situation if i wanted to have fun so i think music can definitely make it more fun and as you said for example when you're working on something boring difficult if you listen to music and you feel like it's a lot more fun i think it's great i don't think there is um, anything wrong about that yeah i think certain types of music would be easier than others so even though i like hip-hop music a lot of hip-hop music would be really hard to analyze because they use not just slang words but they use really really like specific slang words mm-hmm. and the grammar's never correct to be honest <laughs> so don't don't yeah don't turn to music for grammar help mm-hmm. i think but it could be an, an interesting way to engage in the language that you're learning and learn some new vocabulary but yeah i think maybe pop music would be a lot better for that there's actually a really funny like tiktok or real or short or whatever of a guy from i think it's central america or south america and he's calling into a radio station and he's asking for a song which is reebok or nike and he's completely like misheard the lyrics and the red the, like the oh host of the God. radio show doesn't know he's like reebok or nike reebok or nike and then he like plays the song and like the guy's like that's it that's it and it, it definitely doesn't say reebok or nike it's really <laughs> funny so yeah just type in reebok or nike uh, radio station on on youtube or google and you'll find it but it's, it's really funny <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna do it for sure <laughs> okay so i think that's all i've got on music and festivals and all that jazz so anything from you veronica <laughs> pun intended <laughs> no, exactly uh, yeah no the same thing for me yeah thank you so much uh sam for the conversation thank you to every single one of you for listening um have a great day yep thank you all for listening everyone bye bye thank you for joining us on this episode of bridging borders if you enjoyed the conversation be sure to subscribe to the podcast for more useful insights stay connected by following us on social media you can find us at bridging underscore borders underscore podcast until next time keep exploring keep learning and keep connecting